Hello, my name is William Stodden, and alongside my running mate, Stephanie Chalinski, I am standing for election to the office of President of the United States as the candidate from the Socialist Party USA. I wanted to take a few minutes to following President Biden's 2024 State of the Union address to introduce myself and to present a socialist platform for the U.S. In the State of the Union, President Biden laid out his vision for the United States. This included policies which are most certainly inefficient half-steps, which can and will be easily rolled back or watered down by those who oppose change. And we should not expect anything more from the chief architect of mass incarceration and a lifelong war hawk. President Biden doesn't seek to take definitive action on behalf of the working and poor families and individuals in this country. He is ideologically committed to the status quo, regardless of the damage done to working families and the working class in America. He has consistently failed to step up and fight for working families and individuals, most especially when doing so might run afoul of the interests of the donor and investor class who funds his political party. The one promise the Biden administration has kept was the promise that he made to a group of wealthy donors in 2019 after admitting that he needed their money. Biden promised that nothing about our class system or standard of living would fundamentally change. He has ensured that wealth inequality, which reached crisis levels during the pandemic, not only continued during his administration, but got worse. During Joe Biden's tenure in office, the U.S. government has done nothing to offer any kind of support to consumers who were crushed by record high inflation that entirely reversed the tiny gains that workers made during the pandemic when there was a bottleneck in the labor market that forced employers to pay workers better. The stock market did well under Biden, but consumers have experienced nothing but pain. And just because we are used to it now doesn't make it any less painful. Let us not forget that the Biden administration promised Americans a $2,000 bribe to vote for Democrats in 2020. And then, as soon as Democrats won, they allowed the Republicans to cut that bribe down to $1,400, defending that cut as a necessary measure to force Americans back to work, before he allowed the expanded and refundable child tax credit, which lifted millions of American children out of abject poverty, to expire, reinstated student loan repayment, and interfered in union negotiations between railroad unions and employers on behalf of investors. Biden's domestic policy has been one disappointment after another, whether it be his choice to means test and therefore doom student loan forgiveness, his refusal to move on critical criminal justice reform, his complete inability to protect reproductive and gender rights, or his unwillingness to work for legislation to help poor and working Americans afford housing. His administration is a string of broken promises, half-hearted performative outrage, and stunning ineptitude. We have ongoing inflation, underemployment, wage stagnation, and the lack of a living wage, growing child labor, an unchecked housing crisis in major cities and small towns, and critically high levels of food insecurity all across this country, including in my own county where one in five families are food insecure, and one in three school-aged children in my town are eligible for free or reduced price lunch. I live in Iowa, where a lot of that blame for those numbers falls on the Republican Party and our sociopathic governor, Kim Reynolds, but we certainly do not see any help whatsoever coming from the federal government or any sign of acknowledgement of this problem in rural America from the Biden administration. Biden will not resolve these crises that Americans experience. He cannot. He is tied completely to the Democratic Party, who does the bidding of the owning class in this country. The Democratic Party is a capitalist party. Joe Biden said in August of 2023 that he is, quote, a capitalist. He has no empathy for the struggles of the working and the poor families in this country. The socioeconomic system he enthusiastically embraces requires a permanent underclass who are kept poor and desperate to serve as cheap labor for those who make their money and their living exploiting the labor, skills, and time of others. Even though this administration currently brags about low unemployment, our economic system would collapse if everyone had a good paying, safe, dignified job because capitalism requires a portion of us to always be hungry, homeless, and desperate so that we can be used by them to scare those who are lucky enough to have jobs into accepting low wages, no benefits, and unsafe working conditions. Parties that are fully captured by capitalism have made it their one mission in life to pass policy to ensure that nothing about the reality of the American worker will fundamentally change for any of us. As socialists, Stephanie and I have a different set of priorities than the President of the United States. 
Our priorities focus on the advancement of the working class. American workers consistently report that they want good jobs with good wages, where they can feel pride in their work, where they can make enough money to pay their rent, feed and clothe their family, and also have something left over to either put something toward the extras in life or maybe to send their kids to school. No worker wants to work full-time and still be able to qualify for SNAP. They want to be able to stand on their own two feet. And retirement would be nice. Getting rid of the economic system that exists for the benefit of the wealthy and powerful is the first step to addressing the clarion call of workers all across this country. We support a federal jobs guarantee, which can take many forms, including a national civilian service program that would redirect wealth and political power away from the capitalists and their servants in the political system and into the hands of working Americans. We support stronger grassroots unions that are not captured by the Democratic Party and their capitalist backers. And we support workers owning and managing their own workplaces and using those workplaces to achieve power in society and control over their own living conditions. Workers know their job far better than absentee bosses or investors serving boards of directors. We support the radical position of fully nationalizing and socializing the Fortune 500, turning those enterprises over to workers to own and run for their benefit and for the benefit of the entire society. In short, we support things fundamentally changing in a way that can never return to the capitalist mode that our economy exists in now. Other programs our campaign supports for Americans are a national health service, which would slash health care costs and provide universal access to all, and also make a determined effort to finally address the mental health crisis in our country, which includes compassionate care for individuals who are suffering from mental illness and with an aim to remove the stigma around mental illness. We also support a no compromise 30 day minimum paid national sick leave, as well as family leave for all. Such sick leave could have saved hundreds of thousands of lives during the pandemic, and it can be won by an organized labor force during a period where workers can wield unprecedented leverage and power. We support a socialist reconstruction for the environment, which goes farther than the Green New Deal, creating jobs in the public sector and addresses ecological destruction without subsidizing the private sector or increasing waste, pollution, or horrific labor conditions associated with some renewable technologies. Stopping our ecological death spiral can only be made possible by ending the multi-trillion dollar war machine and putting the large Fortune 500 corporations under democratic, socialized ownership. The billionaire shareholders who profit from death and ecocide will never stop doing what directly benefits them, no matter how much money we throw at them to try to get them to do something different. We also call for radical expansion of substantive democracy by eliminating both corruption in public officials through real accountability, and by eliminating barriers to full and meaning participation in local and state government. We seek to address the historic wrongs of our society for both slavery and genocide through the formal acknowledgement of the, our debt that our society owes to the descendants of chattel slaves and to Native American nations, and actively working with these communities to begin paying reparations and to honor treaties made with indigenous populations. This campaign is committed to the ideals of economic and social equality. Only as equals can we ever overcome the privilege of a few that keeps the rest of us from controlling the conditions of our own lives. Only as equals can we all move forward together. We can build equality in our society, but we cannot do that as long as capitalism still exists. And we cannot fight capitalism without fighting the racism, sexism, exploitation, and classism that goes to support that capitalism. The fight against capitalism and the fight against supremacism are one and the same fight, and we are committed to that fight. On foreign policy, the Biden administration has been an absolute disaster. After being instrumental in foisting a 20-year-long conflict and occupation in Afghanistan on the United States, and then completely mismanaging the end of that occupation, Biden has got us into two additional foreign wars one in Ukraine and one in Palestine. Democratic neoliberalism and complementary Republican jingoism has allowed two years of war in Ukraine to continue in a way that lets the U.S. pursue its belligerent foreign policy against Russia at the cost of hundreds of thousands of lives, the destruction of Ukraine, and more than $120 billion. 
in Palestine, the U.S. diplomatic support, financial and military aid, and hypocritical performative outrage has permitted the state of Israel to conduct genocide against the Palestinian people and utter and complete destruction of Gaza. The U.S. is directly behind these immediate conflicts, and capitalism and neoliberalism drive U.S. foreign policy. This says nothing about the way the Biden administration ignores conflicts in places like the Democratic Republic of Congo, which have displaced more than half a million of its own people, or commits atrocities against the working people of Yemen, who are protesting Israel's genocidal war against the working people of Palestine. The Biden administration does nothing about the problems our economic system, or our appetite for illicit drugs, or our enthusiasm about exporting arms and ammo abroad creates in Central and South America. And then it punishes migrants and refugees who flee to the United States to escape the crime and violence at their home. Our government accepts no responsibility for the problems that their uncritical adherence to capitalism creates. A socialist foreign policy aims at peace first and foremost. Whatever else is going on in other countries around the world, one of the most serious threats to life and peace and prosperity of the people of other countries is imperialism driven by U.S. capitalists and our private military sector. We aim to end that once and for all. I have long sought to end U.S. intervention in foreign affairs at all levels and reduction in U.S. military spending. And it is in these policies, not the policy of war and imperialism, that will lead to both peace at home and overseas. The Socialist Party in our campaign has called for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza since the beginning of this conflict. We support the efforts of the Palestinians to achieve peace and have long supported a single state solution in Palestine, which is multi-ethnic, secular, democratic, and free of external interference. We support a complete and immediate end of U.S. foreign military aid to the state of Israel. The U.S. is a main instigator in the ongoing conflict in that region. Peace is possible if the U.S. stops using Israel to further its own foreign policy aims. We also support a suspension of military aid for Ukraine. Currently, the Biden administration is keeping just enough aid going to Ukraine to continue to prop up the Zelensky administration, but not actually win the war. Our policymakers brag about the notion that Ukraine is Russia's quagmire. To use that conflict as a tool to weaken and humiliate Russia. A withdrawal of military support for Ukraine will force the resolution of that conflict and an end to the death and suffering for both Ukrainian citizens and for Russian conscript soldiers who are being forced to fight in the meat grinder of a new Cold War. We call for an immediate withdrawal from U.S. bases overseas. We call for the abolition of NATO and other militaristic belligerent alliances. We call for the U.S. to step down from its position in the U.N. Security Council, a position it uses almost exclusively to resist the efforts for peace around the world and shield war criminals, foreign and domestic, from any sort of accountability for their atrocities. We call for unilateral nuclear disarmament and dismantlement of all strategic and tactical nuclear, biological, and chemical weaponry in the U.S. arsenal. And we support full funding of the Veterans Administration, including full mental health care, housing, and vocational programs to try to stem the epidemic of suicide and homelessness among American veterans. The real difference in this election is not between one evil and a supposedly lesser evil who are both themselves beholden to the same set of donors and who have essentially the same policies, both foreign and domestic. The difference is between the two major parties and the Socialist Party USA. This campaign is about a movement. It is about building something that will last after we are gone. It is about starting the conversation. It is about figuring out what we have to collectively do to end global exploitation, war, poverty, hunger, and underemployment once and for all. If you like these ideas and would like to look further into them, visit us at spusa2024.org or join the Socialist Party at socialistpartyusa.net. Read our principles and platform. Find a local or start a local in your area. Work with other activists, radical unions, peace movements, students, and veterans groups, tenant unions, and other groups who are fighting for social justice, economic equality, and radical substantive democracy. The Socialist Party USA is the most democratically run party in the country today. We will not change anything by waiting on elite politicians to change it for us. We will only change things by finding out what people want and need, and then organizing and fighting for that every day until we get it. The State of the Union is one that is controlled by and for capitalism. The thing that gives me hope is that I know it doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to simply accept that nothing will fundamentally change. If we want change, we can make change. Thank you, and good evening.